Hi everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Avengers 5 Top 10 WTF questions. What is going on with the next Avengers film? There were a lot of big problems at the end of Avengers Endgame that none of the characters really addressed that they'll have to deal with in those future movies. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Marvel Easter egg videos. We're going to learn about Marvel Phase 4 this summer at Comic-Con after Spider-Man Far From Home comes out. We're also doing an IMAX ticket giveaway for that too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave an Avengers comment on the video. Obviously careful for spoilers for Avengers Endgame, but starting with number 10, when will they actually release Avengers 5? Is it going to be three years? Is it going to be four years? Typically every Marvel phase of movies, phase one, phase two, and phase three were capped at the end with an Avengers team up before you start a new phase. The last two cycles have been Avengers movies every three years, not including Avengers Endgame because that was back to back with Infinity War. The only exception to that was the very first Avengers movie. It took four years after the first Iron Man film to get to that just because they had so many characters to introduce for the first time and so many concepts to deal with. The Avengers as a brand is so important to Disney. They will always do Avengers films regardless of who the roster is. If you look at the Disney park situation, they spend so much money developing their parks like Star Wars Land. They're making a Marvel Land in the next couple of years and look at the symbol that they're using to tease it. It's not a Marvel logo, it's the Avengers logo because it's much more specific and evocative of the Avengers characters. Right now, I wouldn't be surprised if they wait four years to get to that next Avengers film because there are so many new characters they're trying to introduce during Marvel Phase 4 and they have those Avengers spin-off TV shows to sort of fill in the gaps so they're not rushing to get four or five films out a year. Number nine, what happened to the fabric of the universe now that Thanos destroyed our version of the Infinity Stones? Remember, the Ancient Ones said that they control the flow of time, so they serve a fundamental function every time you're not using them. What's going to happen to the universe? Is it going to cause more problems down the line? That's an Avengers level problem. Like Doctor Strange no longer has the Eye of Agamotto because he doesn't have the Time Stone anymore because Thanos destroyed it and it was one of the few things he was using to keep Dormammu at bay. So there are consequences to the end of Avengers Endgame that they have not dealt with yet or addressed. Number eight, will Tom Holland re-sign a new contract beyond Spider-Man 3 so that he can be in Avengers 5? And will Marvel Studios and Sony re-sign their sharing arrangement, allowing more Spider-Man in the MCU? Right now, Marvel's contract with Sony is up after Spider-Man Far From Home, but Tom Holland still has one movie on his Spider-Man contract with Sony, so they wanted to be dicks about it. Sony could turn around and make Spider-Man 3 without Marvel and go back to the way things used to be. But don't freak out yet because the good news is based on what all the decision makers and producers have said that doesn't seem very likely but Kevin Feige did say that they wouldn't talk more about that till after Spider-Man Far From Home hit theaters. So then they'll start talking about the future of Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Seven, what's the new official roster going to be? Because you have a whole bunch of new characters that we just introduced. A couple of characters either died or retired in the case of Hawkeye. Like he's officially retired now. So if he comes back for other future Avengers films, it'll probably just be small cameos. But the newest members that we just introduced that have not officially or just officially joined the Avengers are Black Panther, Spider-Man, Ant-Man, Falcon, because he's Captain America now, maybe Doctor Strange, and sometimes Winter Soldier, who's kind of a contract player kind of like Captain Marvel, like she's mostly a space-based character that comes to help out when she's needed, but for the most part, she stays in outer space. So you can't really call those characters permanent Avengers, just like temporary, sometimes Avengers. The new full roster of Earth-based heroes, assuming people re-sign contracts and just don't come back, are Hulk, Thor, War Machine, Ant-Man, Spider-Man, Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Vision and Scarlet Witch, if they re-sign contracts, Winter Soldier and Falcon Captain America. Wouldn't be surprised if the Wasp winds up joining the Avengers at some point just because it seems like they're headed in that direction. Ant-Man just joined so why wouldn't she also then join the team later? But we're still at the beginning of Marvel Phase 4 so there's so many new characters to introduce like Vision and Scarlet Witch didn't become part of the Avengers till after Avengers Age of Ultron so don't be surprised if we get some new characters that will become Avengers later during Phase 4. But just because people become Avengers doesn't guarantee that they'll be in an Avengers movie. They always have to find reasons for the super powerful characters to be busy off doing other stuff. So at any given time, there's only six or seven characters on screen, regardless of how many characters in the MCU consider themselves Avengers. 
Six, what's going to happen with all the extra Stark tech and things that Iron Man was working on that we didn't see during Avengers Endgame. Really good example of that is the new Spider-Man suit technology, the special printer technology on the back of his plane. What a surprise that Tony Stark has all this advanced tech that he leaves behind for people to use but never bothers to explain until it's time for someone to use it. Like, oh, by the way, I have this really cool toy. Feel free to play with it when you need to. A lot of times what you see in stories though that they also use that as opportunities for villains. Number five, who's going to fill the power vacuum for better and for worse. So big running theme in Spider-Man Far From Home right now is who's going to pick up the legacy of Iron Man and become the next Tony Stark. Who's going to be that next A-list hero that everyone looks to. Who's going to assume leadership of the Avengers if they used to follow Captain America and Iron Man together. Lab's all set up boss. Oh, actually, he's the boss. I just pay for everything and design everything and make everyone look cooler. Black Widow kind of took the mantle of leadership between Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Like she stayed at the Avengers base permanently, just liaising with all the other heroes around the globe, trying to pick up the pieces. Going into phase four, just knowing the characters that we have right now, best candidates for leaders are Black Panther. Downside is he's a king though, and he doesn't have a lot of free time, but he is one of the biggest figures of authority. And he has all the money in the world to fund the Avengers with. He's even richer than Tony Stark because of Vibranium then maybe there's Doctor Strange too because he's such a global authority on keeping the peace in a supernatural extra dimensional sense and he's one of the smartest Avengers too. He's smart like Tony Stark but he's also one of the most powerful sorcerers in the universe. On the flip side of that coin, number four, who is the next big villain after Thanos? When you do Avengers movies, it has to be an epic big bad that no one hero by themselves can defeat and you always have to be building towards a much more big ultimate threat every six to eight years as they did with Thanos. Started with Loki in the first Avengers movie, then they did Ultron, slightly worse villain, then they reveal Thanos, the ultimate big bad of the first 22 films. There are a lot of characters worse than Thanos in the MCU already. You add the Fox, X-Men, Fantastic Four characters, there's even more. Doctor Doom, Kang the Conqueror, the Super Scroll, the Secret Invasion Scrolls, and Norman Osborn, Dark Avengers are all good medium level Avengers villains. People who are powerful enough to threaten all the Avengers together but aren't necessarily big cosmic threats. Next big overarching grand villains though you have Dormammu, Galactus, and the Celestials, all solid picks even if you don't consider some of the more obscure villains from the Marvel comics. Really hoping someday though that they do Galactus, they fight him, and then in a later movie have to team up with him against an even bigger problem. But that's years, years down the road. Three, will they try to include X-Men or Fantastic Four characters in that next Avengers movie? The end of phase four is a very good time to start setting those people up. Like Kevin Feige said, oh, it's going to be a couple years. There'll be a cooling off period for those X-Men characters before you see them pop up. Reed Richards would be a badass addition to the Avengers, one of the few people that's capable of saying they can pick up some of the mantle of Tony Stark in terms of brilliance. You have to look at a lot of the qualities that they brought to the Avengers and Tony Stark brought a lot of the money, a lot of the authority, and a lot of the brains to the team. Reed Richards is even smarter than that, so if you introduce even bigger cosmic threats, you need someone on the level of Reed Richards on the team. Two, how will the new Avengers spin-off TV shows help build to Avengers 5? Kevin Feige said that the story of those spin-off TV shows like the Loki show, the Falcon Winter Soldier show, they would influence the MCU going forward so they'll be relevant to what's happening by the time we get to Avengers 5. But I think part of the idea is, is that they're serving underserved characters because when you do an Avengers film, you only have so much time to devote to character development so the B and C list characters, the lesser people, usually don't get a lot of screen time. That's why they're bringing back Baron Zemo during the Falcon Winter Soldier show. So they could always do Masters of Evil. There's just a lot of side stuff and character development they can do. Like if they wanted to set up a Thunderbolts storyline with side villains in the MCU so that in a future Avengers movie, they could do Dark Avengers. Speaking of which, number one, what are they going to call the next saga of films? What story is it going to be based on? They call it the last 22 films, phase one, phase two, phase three, the Infinity Saga as in the Infinity Gauntlet Saga. They always base the movies on the bones of a comic book arc. There are a ton of huge ones that they can do, but I think a lot of you will agree that the next saga of films, the next 22 films, should be based on Secret Wars, the Secret Wars saga, leading up to a giant multiverse crossover.
As for smaller stories for Avengers 5, there's always Secret Invasion, Dark Reign, if they really are doing Norman Osborn. They talk about someone taking up the mantle of Tony Stark. There are a lot of big Marvel villains out there that could think that they're up to the task of being the next Tony Stark because no villain thinks of themselves as a villain. Norman Osborn is the kind of self-centered person that would think himself brilliant and grand enough to be the next Iron Man that everyone looks up to. Dark Avengers would be an amazing storyline if they could work up to that. It's a little too soon to do Avengers versus X-Men, but that's also a solid pick for a later Avengers film. So let me know in the comments, what is your biggest questions about Avengers 5? And I'll add to a list of videos that I'm working on. I know there's a lot of big questions about what's going on with Marvel Phase 4. Don't worry, a lot of those questions will be answered in the next couple of months. I'll name a new giveaway winner when I post new Marvel, but click here to learn about the future of Spider-Man and Venom crossing over in the movies, and click here for my brand new Rick and Morty Season 4 teaser trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you.